Hello, my Fireflies, and welcome back to the Cyan Firefly. It's me, Lyette. And Azalee. And today we're going to bring you our closing thoughts on the Guild Wars 2 Lost Shores one-time event. This is exactly why we did not have a... Sunday sit-down. Yeah, for you guys yesterday. So, <laughs> sorry about that. With that all but, day. hey, we were really working on a big event and we wanted to bring you guys coverage of it so here you go now the footage in the background is of course guild wars 2 and it's specifically of the event in question mm -hmm. now what exactly happened during this event azalee oh uh, tyrio or specifically mostly lion's arch got invaded by these monstrous creatures called karkla they look like giant... karka see you got me doing it now you got me doing it K-A-R-K-A. -A. Yes. There's no L. <laughs> Shut up. But these, like, massive crab monsters just kind of invaded. Yes, it was actually quite interesting. The first event was on uh, Friday. Friday, yeah. Uh, Asley was at work, so I had to kind of record that all myself. But Asley was present for Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So that was pretty fun. But, um, oh my god, those things are massive. You just look up at them and go, oh, Basically, what, what ended up happening is that this group called the Consortium uh, appeared... A at, rival to the um, Black, Black Lion, Lion Trading, Trading Company. Company. Uh, Let's make sure we're specific about that. But they, they basically appeared in Lion's Arch, and they had this resort they wanted to send people to. It was this beach with white sands and all sorts of interesting stuff. Now, apparently, them going to this land uh what was it called the su south set cove or something south like that? sun cove S something like that and they uh basically kind of pissed off the local flora and fauna which <laughs> were the karka. karka and the karka as a result decided to take revenge on lion's arch which this giant ancient karkla yay <laughs> you just did it <laughs> karka came out of the uh the bay. the bay destroyed a ship and then leapt up onto the side of the uh, coast, I guess you would call it, near the lighthouse, and basically just Wreck started. Shit up. Yeah, he <laughs> he brought in all of his little buddies and they all started attacking, and that was the first invasion. We all had to deal with that. Of course, Asley wasn't there, but it was basically a long, drawn-out fight. Now, this particular instance had all sorts of problems associated with it and it wasn't just isolated between a couple of people because this was a big advertised event basically everybody who had a guild wars 2 account was trying to get on uh -huh. so everybody was kicked to different overflow <laughs> servers i was stuck on an overflow server actually no i think i was in the main server for that one but basically there were a crap ton of people not to mention it, it was lion's arch lion's arch is busy at the w best of times <laughs> So, it came to a point where, like, I was trying to render in more PCs than actual NPCs. So, my computer, which is a good computer, I keep on telling you guys that, it could hardly keep track of what was going on during yeah. that fight. Not, like, enemies would spawn in about two feet away from me. <clears throat> it was ridiculous. <laughs> and not to mention... Well, the... I think that goes to show that the event was popular enough to get a lot of people's attention which yes is, which isn't a bad thing yes it was it's very good that they managed to get attention but the event played out poorly because of that yes and a lot of people were put off to the point where they didn't even show up for the next two phases yeah so there are things that i think arena net could have done better for instance they could have spread out the event more across the city which would have caused less bottlenecks. There would have been less people in specific areas, yeah. which would have made it render better. It would have definitely cut down on the leg quite a bit because there were instances where I would break off from the main group and try to fight one of the big car, uh, Karka with just a couple of people. Granted, we didn't fare all that well because these things were crazy powerful. Yeah. Because there were so because of how <clears throat> Guild Wars does events. The more people in a given area, the more the creatures in the area are buffed and the more creatures will appear. So if you have so few people trying to deal with an event in a specific spot, yeah, you kind of get your butts handed to you because these things can now one-hit you. 
Yeah. Not to mention the adults could spawn eggs, which spawn these little head crab things. <laughs> and because of all the activity going on, those little head crab things wouldn't render. So they'd you suddenly attack. See. They'd suddenly attack you and explode, and you wouldn't know what was going on. Next thing or you know, or they attach themselves to your head, and then suddenly you have like limited vision. Yeah, you'd suddenly, the the screen, you'd suddenly be black, on your ass, like, and you'd fuck? have no idea what the hell was going on. <laughs> but uh, after that event closed out, they opened up the new dungeon, which is called the. Uh, the we call it the Fractals Dungeon. I don't know the full name of it. But, I unfortunately wasn't able to get through to it. So but it, I don't know if it's... I don't think it's still there right now. No, it's it's there. It's oh. a permanent dungeon. Oh, well, yeah. then I'll get to do it later. <laughs> By no. the time this comes out, I'll probably be doing it. <laughs> now, the cool thing about the Fractals dungeon is that you can do it any at any level. It The dungeon itself uh, basically sets itself to the highest level of the person participating in the dungeon so if you have all level 69s it'll be level 69 if you have somebody who's level 50 and somebody who's level 80 well it'll be a level 80 dungeon and the person who's level 60 will get screwed joy <laughs> so there you go now the interesting thing about the dungeon is that it's not just one dungeon it's a set of nine miniature dungeons and uh asley hasn't seen this yet but she no will. but you uh, you have uh Spoken about a couple of the mini events that went on, and so it does are, sound really interesting. So there are all these little cool things that uh, happen. For instance, I ran through it with a group, and uh, the first dungeon we actually got to do was um, it was basically a recreation of the Battle of Asgalon, where uh, it was the Flame Legion charging in to try to take down Asgalon from the Asgalonians, trying to reclaim their ancestral homeland from the men. And it was a really cool event. You got to, like, charge through this battlefield. There were siege weapons everywhere. You got to blow down a gate. It was hard as hell, <laughs> especially the end where there's, like, six ballista and a ton of arrow carts and somebody who could fix them. Ha! That's always good. So, yeah, that was fun, but balls hard. <clears throat> um, we also got to do another underwater one where uh, there was a bunch of crate everywhere. And uh, basically... You had to go through this underwater dungeon fighting crate and freeing prisoners. But you got to this one section where there was like a portal underwater. And once you got through it, you got turned into a dolphin. <laughs> it was a dolphin that could not defend itself whatsoever. You only got a couple of abilities and you basically had to dodge a bunch of invisible crates. They were all invisible. The only way you could see them is if you spammed the one button which caused a echolocation thing to go out. It was cheap as hell, but it was it was a hilarious dungeon. Basically everybody <laughs> who I went with was pissed off, but I still had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I honestly I think that's that's neat. I that gives an entirely different perspective on um, game, not just the game mechanics, but play style. Like, you really have to think a little bit more well, on your feet. Well, it's thing I don't really see in a lot of MMOs. The yeah. idea of transforming and getting a whole new skill set and trying to have to survive just using that skill set. Something that Guild Wars does a lot more often than other games. There are a lot yeah, of events. Yeah, there are a lot of events, even just... Um, like the uh, Sun Beasts yeah. in Caledon Forest. That was that again, a very fun. Or event. there, I know that there was a couple of um, little events where if you were going up to the, any of the uh, the Highlight camps, there was one in particular where you had to fight this. Uh, I think it was a giant Moa, but you had to fight. Yeah, on that's e the Sun Beast. Oh, that is a Sun Beast. Yeah. Okay, well, never mind then. Yeah, there are, I'm talking up my ass. There's a couple. <laughs> there's a couple of those like that. You have to fight a giant Moa. You have to fight. Uh, a jellyfish. I only remember the but, whole one. But you have to be on the equal level to yeah. the Sun Beast. You have to take the form of that creature. And then the, there's the final battle where you fight the Hylic Priestess or something like that, and it randomly turns you into animals during the fight, so you have to constantly like fight it Adjust as Adjust yeah. as that creature, yeah. It's I, it, it was an I interesting think it's one. fun. Like the first time that it happened, I'm like, holy shit, what is going on, Mash Keys? <laughs> but going back to the situation at hand. Uh, so you have to go through this area as these dolphins that really can't defend themselves. I basically stuck myself as the form of the healer. I was constantly trying to res all my teammates because you got this awesome ability that drew all your unconscious teammates to you and res them. Nice. So, 
Oh. Well, we finally got to the end of that, and then we had to fight a giant jellyfish that just wouldn't die. <laughs> like, seriously, I think ArenaNet should take a look into this boss, because it couldn't really threaten us, it didn't do a whole lot of damage, and it basically turned into a whole thing of spank it until it dies. It just... <laughs> We constantly pounded on it and pounded on it and pounded on it. None of us even fell past, like, half health, I believe, during the entire fight. And then when we finally killed it, we were just like, Oh my god! It's finally dead! Let's go to the next fractal! Brilliant. So, for the fractal dungeon, you go through a set of three different fractals... And that's the end. You you get your rewards, and it's n nice and stuff. Every time you finish a particular fractal dungeon, you get these five, uh, I guess I call them badges, commendations, or whatever. And you can trade them in for some cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, commendations. I remember here seeing a lot of people talking about how yeah. to get commendations. You can trade them in for cool stuff. The other interesting thing is that every time you do the fractal dungeon, you unlock the next level of difficulty. I've only done it up to two, because halfway through the second one i had to bail out because my internet connection got all faulty yeah. and the group didn't really want to play with me anymore after that because i every time i ended up dropping we had to reset the dungeon which ah. was yeah so i don't really blame them for that but there you go uh well, you really can't help your internet crapping on you unfortunately yeah. sorry guys but <laughs> anyway uh but I, I guess it's at, like, level 10, because the, it does keep on going up in difficulty. Right. I don't know the maximum difficulty, but at least at 10, you start unlocking this Ascended set, which is, like, a set unique to that dungeon. Hmm. And uh, you also run into enemies that can inflict agony on you, which is this all-new debuff that does a crap ton of damage to you over time. Oh, wonderful! Um, and in order to actually deal with that, you have to have that special armor set, which has agony resistance on it. Oh, wow. So, it's it's a brand new in-game dungeon, and it's looking pretty fun. I'll definitely, we'll definitely have to give it a couple run-throughs. Well, you'll have to level up a couple of more times. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, st I'm just barely touching level 70. I'm so bad. I just have not had time to sit down and play anything. So, I, I hate life. <laughs> I hate my job right now. So, the final part of Phase 1 is that they unlock this little scavenger hunt you could do. Now... This was plagued with all sorts of bugs. Yeah. First thing you had to do was you had to talk to this lady. And this lady basically sent you off on a scavenger hunt. You had to go down to the beach and find a crowbar. And you had to find the uh, particular Barrels barrel or with... Barrels boxes uh, or jetsam. Yeah, what you, it was. you had to find the particular barrel with the... Uh, the consortium logo on it. Yeah, and you pry that open. And this Asley did get to do because... Yeah. Well, I this think is where it's I still active, play... actually. It yeah, might be. I don't know. This is, this is where I, w I got the chance to play catch-up on everything. But yeah, she did this on day t three. Day two. Yeah. I did this on day two. Yeah. And then... So you pried open the barrel, and you got a soggy bag. <clears throat> and you had to go talk to the lady again. She told you to go talk to this uh, this guy who no. was part of the... Cons no. No. That was... That's... Uh, Biggs? Next... Briggs? Something like that? Something like that, yeah. They had to go talk to him, and you had to show him the soggy bag, and you had to intimidate him. Then you had to go talk to Noel, who was bugged the hell out. Right, right. Noel was in Caldone Forest and the Honto Trading Post, and he was bugged the hell out for the first day and through most of the second day. Yeah, they they were passing Basically, him. Basically, he was it wasn't not until appearing. Like six or seven hour time that the I, bug I got know. fixed. I really don't know. But basically, he just you couldn't talk to him. He was constantly sitting down. His event never refreshed. And then when his event did refresh, it was nearly impossible to actually do anything to him. Because it was a... You had to get at least get a bronze medal on the quest involving him. And because there were so many people clusterfucked around there, it was very hard to get credit for the actual mission. Yeah. I actually had to pull out my ultimate, my uh, fiery greatsword, and swing on his two guards. Because actually attack... He went down so fast that it was very hard to actually attack him. Yeah. But I did get a gold medal. I'm, uh, I was lucky that the crowd that was around him when I actually got around to doing it was like five or six people. Yeah. So I'm like, yep. Ah. <laughs> and then he had to go deal with uh, Silvari in uh, Garenhof. Yeah. It's called yeah. Garenhof, which is in Kessex Hills. 
He went down pretty easily. I think I got him on my second time around. That that one was a clusterfuck because I remember when I went when I went and did that one. You're stuck inside this building. Not Which a lot of is room very to hell move. on your camera angle, by the way. Oh my god, especially if you get stuck on the stairs. Yeah. Like you're in this one this one small room. You've got a bed, um, a a desk, like one of those nightstand things, and then a set of stairs. And he's standing right by the staircase. Hmm. Pretty much on a bed. <laughs> Pretty like damn close to it. Yeah. And you've got like a group of maybe ten plus people trying to crowd into this one room and fight him and fight it, him. And, and it's the, like oh. the, the events for these two guys only come around like every five to ten minutes. Yeah, they were so fresh it, every it five minutes. So it was annoying as hell. Well, I don't know why ArenaNet more... made it such yeah. a lengthy, but whatever. Um, I mean there are skill bosses that don't take that long to refresh. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so that that's all dealt with. Uh, you finally get all the pieces that you need to, and then you go talk and to you the lady. And you get a map you go, of South Sun South Cove. Sun Cove. So you, then you go talk to the lady again. She says a couple of things, and then it ends. And I don't know if there's any more to that event that may have unlocked. It might have. But we, we'd have to go check. But that's, that's the entirety of Phase 1, and I don't know if that quest line continues. So then the next day happened, phase two. This is when Asley was able to join us and play catch up. Yep. Nine um, minutes to get all this done before yeah. the main event actually now, hit. I know what happens in phase two, but our particular instance of it broke, so I can't show you too much footage of it. Yeah, so it was really basically it happened to a lot of people I think, yeah. from what I've been hearing. So basically what ended up happening is that the Cackla the Cackla come back <laughs> and they start tearing up crap in Lion's Arch again. And, uh, the... I, it, I, it's the... I think it might be the Priory. I, um, I, yeah, the German Priory came up with these guns to... That basically shoot this solvent. And not to mention there was solvent that you could find in barrels. You could basically coat your weapons in the solvent, or you could get these guns that sprayed it out. And basically what the solvent did was it dissolves cackle shells. So it actually made the, uh the veteran, the big Kakla, vulnerable to attack. So you could finally kill them this time around. Yeah. The, the thing with the Kakla, like, at least the, the champions, the veterans, all those, the really big ones, they ended up having two health bars. One, you knock the shield, their their shells off, and the second one is you're actually hitting the meat. But like in, a crab. But in the, very first, the shells. in the very first event in dealing with them, they were invincible. You couldn't kill them. Right. Now... After that, it was, you know, storyline reason your weapons were permanently considered to be coated with this cackla dissolving shell solvent. Yeah. So, whenever you went to South Sun Caverns or Cove or Cove. whatever, yeah. you were considered to have that stuff on you. It was just implied. It was never actually... Yeah. yeah. But after well, that it, point, it you, could kill, you could kill cackla without actually... Ca Karka! <laughs> you could kill Karka without having to go get a special buff for it. Yep. So you draw, you help drive them out of Lion's Arch. Uh, there was, I guess, there was a particular instance where, at the very end of the event, the ancient uh, Kakla Karka. or Karka would jump down, <laughs> and you had to fight it for a little while. But our that never showed. But our Not event, our, our event broke basically. Right at the beginning of the fight, we only got to fight them for a couple of seconds. I got to use one of those sprayer weapons on them. Then they then all they... vanished. And there was a cutscene where the Ancient uh, jumped through... Or, no, that might have happened the day before. But uh, basically, they all just left. Yeah, I remember I remember fighting the giant um, this veteran and out of nowhere it just left up into the air and disappeared out into the bay. I'm like... <laughs> I'm trying to follow it like, with the camera, and I'm like, I can't see it anywhere. Where the fuck did it go? Yeah, so the, and then the everybody was completely like, scrambling, trying to figure out what the hell happened. And yeah, they were like, follow okay. the NPCs, follow the NPCs, and everybody was running around <laughs> like chickens with their heads cut off. We didn't know what the hell was going on. And it basically ended Came poorly, and it pissed off even more people. I, well, you know, everybody... Yeah, English. What ended up happening is everybody was saying, okay, we'll meet at... Um, meet at the docks, meet at the docks, and every, because every, we get this humongous pile on of people scrambling over um, a 
boat from the Black Lion Trading Club, and then there's this dog, this pier right next to it. Did you just call it the Black Lion Trading Club? <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yes, shut up. My tongue is tied. Leave me alone. Clearly. Anyway. <laughs> But we're all we're all sitting there waiting around this NPC that's um, hammering a harpoon or something into the docks. But the thing is, we didn't even know if that was actually going to happen because the event had completely bugged out for us. We didn't know what the heck was going on. And ArenaNet didn't say anything on their Twitter. They basically said, "Wait until the tri the uh, catapult was finished." And we we're like, "What catapult?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then everybody said this running around, where's then, the catapult, where's the catapult, where's the catapult? And there was some, there was a couple of guys who said, oh, the catapult's over here, and they were pointing at a trebuchet. A trebuchet is not a catapult. Uh, I mean... Sorry, that's, that's our, our nerdy, geeky thing going on. Still, a trebuchet <laughs> is not a catapult. No, no, it's not, it's not. But, uh, anyway, we... People will argue differently, but... But... Eventually, this NPC finally appeared, and we were able to actually go to the new map, which is Salsa Cove, Cove, which is a level 80 place. Uh, It'll for, jump you up, For that too. particular event, we were, at least for that particular event, it might continue, you were yeah. jumped up to level 80, which was pretty cool. So there was a couple events there. I mean, they these weren't one-time events. These are events that are still going on. Yeah, it's pretty. it was pretty much... You got there, it was... Help, help, set, set help settle the island. Yeah, help settle the island. So you had to help guard workers as they built bridges you had to um explore the island and set up a road and all this sort of stuff it was it was kind of cool ah okay um so there was hmm. so after that you know we we got to explore quite a bit of the island there was a very inane jumping puzzle where you had to oh jump across God. These temporary floating stone platforms. That was a big pain in it the It wasn't arse. just, they weren't just temporaries. You had geysers that had piles of stones in them. And then you had to wait for the geysers to explode. And then the rocks to settle on this jet of air. And then you had to jump across all these jets, these stones on these jets of air. And yes, get but to... they were temporary platforms. Ah, now, I love ArenaNet. I really like that they, the fact that they've included these puzzles in their games. They're annoying as but fuck, but they're fun. But whoever designed that puzzle can go screw himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really nicely designed puzzle. Oh, but you brought horrifying. out the completionist in me, and I could not stop myself from finishing it. Same with Azalee. Same with I the freaking Hall Halloween puzzle. The I still other did. Month. I was so disappointed. I still didn't get to beat that jumping the fucking clock tower. I'm never gonna I have nightmares yeah, whoever, about that whoever, like, whoever, design, whoever designs these puzzles is a brilliant madman and I hate you <laughs> yes. so much. Yes. I mean, yes, you deserve a raise, but screw you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so, so you get up top of this jumping puzzle and you're finally at the top of this and you get it to a chest and it's you a nice chest, chest and, and you can get some nice stuff out of it but then you realize there's more you yeah. can go the, this chest is sitting in front of a, this derelict ship hull and then you can climb up on top of that ship walk across this rickety little bridge and get to this bigger um floating island thing and then come to realize oh shit there's monsters over here. Yeah, there's, there's a champion reef wind rider. Yeah, cha reef rider. There's a champion reef rider, and the and thing then is, a chest sitting right behind it. It's but like, here's the thing: you fucks. look at its statistics block, and it says a couple of really nasty things. Oh, First that of all, horrible. it says poisons enemies. It's like okay, we've okay. we've run into this before. It's Steals no buffs. What? <laughs> now. I don't know so, if you guys know all that well what a champion does. Mm. Now, champions are enemies that you can't fight one-on-one. -on -one. They are a five-on-one fight. You have to have at least a full group to deal with them. Yeah. So this thing steals buffs. So, so every it time steals somebody buffs gives from you a everybody speed buff it. Or, or a health buff, or he a, gets it. Well, not necessarily. He has to use a specific attack. Right. Not to mention all of his attacks it. bounce. Projectiles only, I realized projectiles only bounce. Like, he had this ability to Yeah, he can to reflect, reflect projectiles. projectiles. He can only do that but if he his, had this his, shield thing around But his it. attacks like, also bounce. Ugh. Now, yes, because it's like electricity, and it, yeah. it hit one target, and it zapped to another target, and it zapped to another target. Like, yeah. my character has, has a similar ability where an arrow can, like, bounce between well, enemies. Well, so can I. That's, like, that's the electricity build for my uh, staff. I can... Ba cause my electric bolts to bounce between three enemies. Yeah. But it's like... 
Well, and not, not to mention, I'm an elementalist. It. All of my attacks are ranged. Yeah, so, so he would he, he would just go god mode and start reflecting all my attacks. And so, then like they uh, they're coming back at you and they're hitting you and they're hitting everybody else. It's like, it's like you I serious? just want the chest. <laughs> so I didn't end up beating him. Je- uh, I I managed to get it. So I I yeah. it uh, was freaking useless. I got a dagger out of this thing. I was like, you know what? It wasn't even worth this. Yeah, Asli <laughs> did end up actually winning that combat. Uh, she ended up doing it at a different time than I could because she couldn't beat skip- skipping stones quick enough. No, there was no, an- the jumping puzzles. Just there was one hate final me. jumping puzzle called Under New Management, which was very basic. You had just had to get on top of this building and get the chest up there. So yeah, that I'm gonna that have to do that one later. I didn't get the chance to it. But that was phase two. It was pretty fun. I wish it hadn't bugged out for us, but there you go. Well, the, only, the beginning part of it bugged out. The rest of it didn't bug out. Well, that the rest of it was just the map opening up for exploration, which... Right, but there were yeah. a couple of events that we got to push into and start mauling the car. Yeah, I'm not, and... I'm not sure if those events... Like, some of those events were probably one time, like building the roads, but other yeah. ones probably weren't one time. Yeah, like there was this one where you have to get up on top of this... Um, the interesting... This th- side island and collect carca eggs for this Silvari who's yeah. gonna make omelets for you and it's like that's definitely not a one time event I've done that multiple times I'm but, sitting uh, there listening to her dialogue and she's just bawling she's her insane. eyes out she's she like, is legitimately oh insane <laughs> whoever voiced that give her a raise too oh my god but um I'm listening to her it's like oh my god I'm, the interesting thing about that particular map too is that uh because Guild Wars has multiple failure states for specific areas, if you fail to protect certain areas, they can become destroyed and you lose the uh, warp zone for that particular space. Yeah. Which, so that's pretty cool. I kind of wish they had more of that in particular areas rather than just having it a uh, contested area. Like, actually have the base destroyed and you have to rebuild it. That would be pretty cool. Mm. But uh, anyway, so moving on, next day rolls around. Yes, phase, phase three. three. So that started off in South Sun Cove itself. Right. Now, basically, what ended up happening is that it started at this particular campsite, which, through a little shilling and wheeling and dealing, we posted out a bunch of guild stuff for uh, everybody there. We reminded people to have fun and come visit our channel. If any of you guys are from that particular event, say hi down in the comments below, because we'd like to know whether or not we actually did attract any attention from that. But, yeah. We had fun playing with you guys. But, mm-hmm. uh, so, Phase 3 started. I dropped the guild buffs for everybody to partake of. It was, like, an, an XP boost, a uh, karma boost. Yeah. A couple of different little interesting things. But it, it made people happy. I was really glad that it made some people smile. But, uh, so, Phase 3 starts, and we have to follow this demolition crew. Now, Azalee remembers this quite well, because we were both together, and this was a horrifying situation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, I don't know who designed this encounter. I think they should have looked into it a little bit more. (laughs) Because Mm -hmm. this was very unfair. (laughs) Granted, it was only a one-time event. So, okay. So, I can understand why they wanted to make it balls hard and very difficult to deal with. Yeah. So, we had to charge into this hive. And they wanted to set explosives throughout this hive. Now, sounds pretty basic. Yeah. Until you realize how many how many karka are in this freaking hive, and they're not just like little car- karka. No, they're veterans. They're the big. They're every fucking where. And you got, yeah. And you, it's not just the big veterans. You got little veterans. Yeah. It's like now they can do this ability uh, where they basically turn into artillery drones. They start spitting acid everywhere. And now, because people with the worst computers, like I actually had a couple of discussions with some of the guys there, um, because the people with the worst computers didn't really necessarily know what they, what was going on throughout the entire thing, because they couldn't really see what was going on. Half they the, were half standing their stuff in pits. Wasn't rendering. They were standing in puddles of acid. They were getting run over whenever these things came rolling. Like, yeah, the, the veterans I could and see, the champions. but they couldn't. The veterans and the champions had this, on top of their acid-spitting attacks, they were laying eggs, Yeah. and they had, like, this rolling ability where they... Just they, keep rolling, 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 yeah, rolling, well, we rolling. Made, what? <laughs> we made this joke. 
joke a couple of times every time. It was like bowling for dummies. Yeah. These things just compacted, folded their legs in, and then came like freaking bowling ball. But and it, they just ran people over. Like and they, they dropped them. They didn't have a whole lot of health. I, once some of them got targeted, they would get down really quickly. The problem is they were like around a curve. They were very far down and they would t turn into artillery mode and there were just so many of them that the acid would blanket everywhere and we got wiped a lot. And I mean, there were 30 plus people. There were probably around 50 people in this one event and we all died. Constantly. Like, I couldn't like, believe I don't, it. I, I, I was amazed at like the Out last of all time the I had seen there, that many corpses least... was during the fire elemental event. And yes. Freaking, uh, yes. <laughs> what, 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 what is that place? Oh, the Asura think... starting ground, whatever yeah. that is. The, the, I forget what it was called. But, oh, but anyway. It was so just... many corpses. Total party wipeout. <laughs> I was amazed. Like every once in a while, I could see a couple people like sneaking around trying to res people out of sight of like all the cargo would retreat back. It re it reminded then... me of World War One. The artillery barrages just. <laughs> it was insane, but you know, ultimately, I did love it. So it was a lot of. It really was fun. So glitches and bugs aside, I had a great time. So I just finally, wish you a... set all these bombs. Yeah. Yeah. So there, you set all these bombs. You have to retreat. Then the ancient ca uh, karka. Yes, the ancient karka gets up. comes up. Oh so you have to go running God. across the plains to find this massive karka. It's about as big a, about as big as one of the dragons. Maybe a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. It, it was a couple sizes bigger than the than the champions and yeah. the veterans. So it but, wasn't that much bigger. But, but it, it, it it filled the screen. Basically, you can't kill the thing. You can't hurt it at all. The solvent's not working on it. So first phase of this particular... And this was a multi-hour event. We were fighting this thing for a long, At long least an hour and a time. half, two hours. Like, I don't remember so, how long I was sitting in front of my computer. I'm like, but oh, my, my hand my is cramping. My fingers started getting numb. It was just... <laughs> My wrist was cramping so over the mouth. So we had to like, do a oh, bunch of different. We had to do a bunch of different things. We had to drop a giant tree yes. on it. We so had we to the tree fight on all it. of its reinforcements. Yes. Yeah. We, we drop the tree on it. It it starts limping away, and there's a decent chunk out of its health bar. But then it starts calling in the reinforcements, and we have to kill the reinforcements until this little bar fills up that says okay next phase begins when this bar is filled so we're killing we're killing we're killing we're getting killed over and over and over again and there it's was like, so much death in that particular oh event my god. it wasn't even funny i'm laughing the entire thing going oh my god this is ridiculous so we we do that uh there was another event where we had to uncover these geysers and load rocks into them and actually use the geysers as like catapults to shoot rocks at the thing oh yeah that was actually um, kind of fun and then there was the had gas to deal, geyser we, one we had to deal with the reinforcements again but this time we had mortars we could shoot mortars at it yes which was pretty cool then we had to deal with the gas geysers. And the gas geysers, like, expose the gas geysers and hurl the ancient karka into the... Yes, they would explode and they'd hurt the karka and the karka would go running. And yeah, it... but it, at you, this they, point... didn't, they didn't warn you at preemptively that, oh, exposing it? You're getting it blown backwards. <laughs> now, I'm going to cut off here and say, this is the point where I lagged out again. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. Now, I completely lagged out and I lost connection and I was like, no. <laughs> So I had a momentary panic attack. So I had to completely close out of the game, close out fraps, restart fraps, and uh, jump back in. I was in another outflow. And that outflow had beaten the ancient Karka. And I was like, oh, God, no. Please tell me that I didn't miss the event. Asley, Asley, did I miss the event? She's like, no, we're still fighting it. It's like, okay, okay. Join, 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 join. So I right-clicked her portrait, and I saw join outflow. Luckily... There was enough space in it. So I got to join her, and at this point, I see that we've backed the Karka all the way into the hive. And at this point... No, we're pretty much we're chasing it up the yeah. hive. And it had covered all the explosives and webbing. So we had to start uncovering the explosives to piss it off again. So these explosives would go off, it would get hurt, and it would go rolling down the, uh, the hive again. And we got wiped a couple of times here, too. Yeah. I, th there was this funny moment too. I remember 
it starts rolling down the hill, and I get knocked off the edge yeah. of like you got the, the spiral staircase thing going up the up the middle of the hive, and I get knocked off, and I go falling. Like the the knock, the roll didn't kill me. I, I still had a lot of health left after the, after getting hit. The fall killed me. Yeah. I dropped down like four or five levels before I slammed into the yeah, ground. I was and cracking up as I helped pick up her corpse. It was hilarious. <laughs> But finally, we get all the way down to the bottom, and there's the ancient carcla. Its armor's been knocked off. We finally get to fight it. Yes. And oh, it's this glorious. massive battle against this giant thing. And then we start seeing, like, these, um, finish, like, the, these yeah, F-commands. Yeah, this thing that says finish him. him. So, so, yeah, we finally we got all the way key. down to the bottom, and we're, you know, we keep on slamming the F key. So Which makes we're our characters jumping up, jump and, up down. and down. And I'm like, why are they jumping and up and then down? The and then we cavern. jump over. And then it switches to this event screen, and the cavern below us drops out in this lava. It falls into this lava pit. And, and it you comes- see this thing, like, clawing at the air, screaming, ah! And then finally, drops under the under the lava. So like, yes, we're done. And I'm looking and then at my screen going, back out. <laughs> I'm looking at my screen going, oh, it's good. they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. Yeah. What's waiting? Three, two, one. Yeah, and it, po- it and pops it- back out and it turns into stone. And it's like, <laughs> yes, yes, we beat it. <laughs> and this, this, so then we get this giant chest and we walk over to the giant chest and we got some really cool, unique equipment. Yeah, a lot of um, um, rares and... Yeah, we got a couple of exotics. Yeah. Uh, which are Unfortunately, I couldn't use anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is that is kind of an annoying situation. Uh, we should probably discuss that for a minute. Because of how Guild Wars works, the equipment's completely random. You are not yeah. guaranteed to get equipment that you can use, which is big pain in the arse yeah i kind of wish that they had coded something i mean i got a scepter which is i can use but it's not good for my build which i can't complain too much at least it's for my class yeah but azalee here didn't get anything that she could use yeah i'm playing i'm playing the thief so i i got heavy armor i got heavy um male gloves and then yeah um, i got all a scepter so i'm like I can't use any of this yeah. outside of like what's inside the uh, the chat the carca chest. Yeah. So out of that, I got. Um, yeah, we also got a carca bag, which contained yeah. a shell, which was a really good uh, accessory, which oh, gave like plus twenty five to every single stat. And That's then like, there was whoa. a twenty slot bag, which was yes. really nice. Which I'm using right now. It's like, I think I think I, I think the bag is actually unique. Uh, yeah. Nobody will ever get that bag. The shell you can get as long as you get. Uh, 1,000 carca shells and trade them in somewhere. That's got to be a lot of carca killing. <laughs> but, um... Nope. But, I... I think it's one of the most frustrating things. Like, you go through these kinds of events, you you bust ass, you break equipment, you die, you die, you die, you shell out a lot of, of silver to fix stuff up. But you... Nine times out of ten, you really don't get anything... Now... And I, let me. A lot of the, I, I know where you, I think I know where you're gonna go yeah. with this too. It's like it's all about the experience, yeah. and I don't, I, I agree completely with that sentiment. It is all about the experience because we're the only ones that get to say we finished this thing to the end, and it was fucking awesome. There, are, there are but... two, there are two separate arguments here. Basically, what Arena Net should have done is that they should have given up, given us. Some more stuff that we could have used. Something that we could have actually benefited from. Granted, we all got the Karka shell, but that's not something we can show off. Right. Like, they, they should have given us, like, a unique hat or something. Just something we could wear around saying that I would have been we so kick-ass. fucking... I would have been giddy as hell if I got to have, like... Remember when we were talking about those, those yeah, little the, baby the, the things? Little the little hatchlings, they look like head crabs from, uh... They Apple. latched onto your face, and these are the things that blocked your vision. Yeah, you, it would have been really cool the, if at the end of the event... Had this little thing attached to your head, and you're running around with this carca baby... This carca yeah, hatchling was a debuff face that blinded hugger. You. <laughs> but it would have been really cool if they had given you, like, a unique backpack or a unique, uh, head slot item that would have allowed you to wear one. Yeah. And it would have just been a little bit of bling to show that we had been part of this event. That, you know, 
That would have been really nice. But conversely, it would have been really nice if they could have actually given us, like, a piece of equipment we could have actually used. Right. Like, n there were a lot of people who didn't get stuff that they could use. They had to end up selling it on the trading house. Well, money yep. is pretty uh, cool. Like, yeah. I got three gold out of it from a uh, set of boots I couldn't wear. Yeah. But, uh, I, but you gotta say, I ended up having to sell just about everything outside yeah. of the uh, the shell and, the, and that... Um, 20 the, slot bag. The 20 slot bag. Like, those are the only things that I could yeah. use. And it, to, to me, that's, I think it's very frustrating. Yeah. Like, but I understand we that. Were, we've we were already discussing but this... we've already kind of killed that. Right, but I was like, we were discussing yesterday what probably could have been done they a little should bit better. Add, like, I understand why the equipment's random. They're trying to inspire a living uh, economy, so people are constantly trading stuff. Which is a good idea. Like, I'm not going to deny it. That's a but great idea. they should but... at least always make it so that in these chests you always get at least one piece of equipment for your class. Yeah, like, I, I guarantee. And not just something, um really great like something random like there's no guarantee you're gonna get a sword or a hat or like for boots. It, basically the statement would be written is like you're this class so one item is going to be this this or this it's going to be either light armor for your class or it's going to be a staff or it's going to be a scepter something like that or if you're a thief it's going to be a piece of medium armor and it's going to be or it's going to be a dagger or it's going to be a pistol just something like that. Yeah. So at least when you access the chest, it's going to at least have something for you. Like, maybe you can't use it, but at least it's something that you could possibly wear. Right. Like, even if it's level 80 stuff. Yeah. Like, a lot of, a lot of the stuff there that you got out of that event was you have to be level 80 to yeah. use it. Like, even... Even in that um, that little event when you were collecting the Karka eggs, you you could get an omelet out of it. You could buy yeah. omelets, and you can't eat them for the for the buff that it gives you until you're level eighty. So I'm like, oh, you son of a bitch! I'm only level sixty something right now, so I have to wait. But I don't mind because I can use it in the future, so I'm gonna hold on to it. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind getting a level 80 equipment and waiting until I'm level 80 to actually use it. Yes. It's something that I will use in the foreseeable future. Yeah. But now for the argu other argument, it is, re it is really about the experience. Yes. I mean, and I get to keep this, you know, memory with me for all time because I got to record mm -hmm. it on Fraps and I'm yep. uploading a lot of footage of it from YouTube. I have, like, at least three hours of footage. Mm -hmm. I have, Granted, I have to condense it down into... We've been talking for about 42 minutes now, but um, I have to condense it down a little bit, but at least I get to keep this memory with me. Yes. Yeah. So we got to go on this massive... Journey. Journey. And it was that lasted really for three days, and we got to fight this really epic enemy that nobody else is ever going to fight. We have the privilege, privilege of saying that we were there, and nobody else ever gets to do this again. So that's pretty cool. Yes. There is something very satisfying about being able to do like these one-time events. Like even even the Halloween event, I didn't get to do everything in it, but I got to pick and play around with what was available and it was, it was bloody fun. Mhm. Mm that's that's really all it comes down to is this is a game. It's meant to be fun. It was. A, I think what it was a great way to kick off a new area. Yes, yeah. it, it really, really was. I think what frustrated me the most yesterday is we're going through this final battle. And there was at least five or six guys that were doing. It was nothing. really just one guy. There was a couple of guys that were agreeing with them. But this this one guy was very Namask or whatever his name uh, was. Don't don't name names. But well, this is going to be right in the video. I mean, it was kind of impossible for us not to... Yeah, well... But anyway... The guy did nothing but complain. To me, I find that absolutely I guess he got kicked out of another outflow and he didn't get a uh, reward from it. And it's like, well, do you want two rewards from two different outflows? Fight to the end of this one and you'll still get a reward. It's... <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't understand the desire to bitch and moan about the honestly, game in this if you fashion. Are, like, honestly, if, if you aren't having fun playing a game, don't you play. should stop playing it. Yeah, that, that's really all it comes down to, but 
what frustrates me is a lot of these people will just hop onto the game, do nothing but complain, and try to bring other people down. Here's and the, that, that well, just here's pisses the, me off. Here's the bigger the problem. Mood. Here's the bigger problem. Those people are the most vocal. People yeah. who are content generally don't really have to voice it. They don't really say too much. So ArenaNet really only hears the people who want to complain, who want to complain about the event. Yeah. Now, this event was beloved by a lot of people. A lot of people actually really enjoyed themselves. There's a couple of pundits who are bitching to this to this day on the forums and stuff like that, but the vast majority of players, at least in my experience, really had a good time. So I'm hoping to hell that ArenaNet... Drop the microphone. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping to hell that ArenaNet is not discouraged by this and continues making really cool events like this. Well, we're I still waiting on the December one, too. They've got yeah. one more coming out, and I yes. don't know what they're going to be doing, but, but I'm looking forward to it. But here's the thing. I'm hoping that ArenaNet also takes criticism from people like me and you and plans them out a little better. Because yeah. while it was a very fun event, I'm not knocking it in, in any way, there's just things that could have been improved. Like uh, the acid, uh, the issue that with acid, the acid thing was cheap. <laughs> that was just uh, like, wicked OP. Yeah, and the rolling, and I'm not, not just the rolling, that. considering the situation with all the lag, with the people who couldn't really see what was going on, was also a little cheap. Yes and no, because we really can't. ArenaNet really can't predict what other people's well, computers are going to be here's like, the thing. too. It, would ju it just did a little bit too much damage for people who couldn't properly react to the situation. Right, but again, ArenaNet can't predict the fact that people can't react. Their Still, computers it's something using... to consider in the future. It's something doing, can... doing something to preemptively anticipate users' computing power, sure. But they really... No, can't... not even necessarily that. Just... Consider that an attack like that in such a massive group setting might not pan out all that well because it could kill a ton of people with no warning. Yeah, like I know you've you've got a gaming rigs rig, rig set up completely for this kind of thing. I'm working on a laptop. My laptop is set up for graphic design. I'm my laptop is built for. Adobe Photoshop and it's not Premiere. really it's built not to meant, render live graphics. Right. It, it's meant to do illustrative work and fixing up fo photos and stuff like that. But I'm sitting here using it nine times out of ten for gaming, and it my computer overheats. Yeah. And it, that nine times out of ten, my computer will just shut off on me in the middle of an event because it's it's working too hard. It's overclocking itself. Last night doing this event. I'm sitting here, and you, you've got a great picture. You're running the game at maximum graphics. You're running fraps, yeah, and I'm granted, like, you granted fucking at, asshole. Granted, at times, <laughs> I drop down to literally 10 FPS. You can probably see that a couple of times here, but yeah, the point remains. But, but my computer, like, I can understand a lot of, like, I could see some of the complaints going, I can't see half of what's going on on the screen, I'm not seeing the enemies rendering. That was happening to me quite a few times. Like, I'm not seeing the Karka approaching, but, but suddenly I'm getting hit, and I'm getting wrapped up with this webbing we're shit. Moving, like, we're oh. moving off a little bit. Things that we think that Arena Neck could improve on. Yeah. And specifically, my focus is uh, on the first two events. The problem with those events is that they were so tightly clustered in a very, very populated area of the world. Yeah. So, there were a ton of people. I don't know how many peop how many uh, people can be at Lion's Arch in one time in one particular overflow, but it's clearly too many. And, uh... Well, that might be a matter of them having to open up more servers, too. No, it's but not, at it's the not moment, even I don't necessarily think that's even that. an option. It's not even necessarily that. They need to spread out those kinds of events more. Yeah. There needs to be more distance between objectives and multiple objectives at once. So people, that would definitely so be So people cool. can spread out. Because yeah. if you have them so clustered, it's going to get really buggy, it's going to get really laggy, and people are going to get pissed. Like, don't they do that with the world versus world, having, like, multiple objectives? Yes, at the same that's time? exactly they why... They need to do that for, like, the main the main event yeah. stuff in the regular game. So it, it just needs to be a more spread out like affair it's, it's not, next time. Right.
Right, because it's not a matter of they don't have the coding for it. They Clearly, they already do it. They just need to import what they do in World vs. World a little more like, into the like regular... Like, I shut off fraps every once in a while during these events, and yes, it did improve my experience a little bit, but it was still tanking my computer. Yeah. Like, there, there were times when something wasn't right Granted, your I no now. longer have top-of-the-line stuff. <clears throat> it's, it's a very good computer, but it's no longer top, top-of-the-line. But I was still tanking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. There's our quid pro quo on it. Also, do a little bit more testing on things like Null and... Yeah, like some of, the, some of those glitches. Like, to be perfectly honest... Like, granted, there's the always going to be unforeseeable stuff. We understand yeah, that. We yeah. forgive you. But that little... definitely pissed a lot of people yeah. off. And it definitely a discouraged more... me they a little at least... bit. They jumped on it quickly, and even though, like, they tried patching it as quickly as they could, yes, which, the is always, the, which is the always great. The response was great. The internet has great response time when it comes to fixing these kinds of yes. things. Yes. Which I, I'm very appreciative of. Yes. It's like, we're all human. We make mistakes. We can't predict what technology is going to do. Let's be honest, coding is a bitch. <laughs> I'm just we've, saying, we've had this maybe discussion they should have, I don't know, like, what they do in the background for testing stuff, but they might have wanted, wanted to have mm -hmm. tested the events, like, a in a test more, yeah. server or something yeah. a little bit more, because Noel was definitely broken, like, no mistake, well, see, he was broken. See, there's a thing, though. You could test it on the test server all you want, but when you make it live, that adds a new variable I, into he, the scenario. How does it, though? What, what makes it different? I don't know, but that might have been what happened. Is like they might have tested it up the yin yang on a test server. Say, okay, this thing is good to go. We're golden. Everything works, and then pushed it out. I and just then don't see what would change. It's not working. I I personally like I I've done game design a little bit. I just don't see what would change in such a massive. I web, massive I don't know. Mashup. This happened to me when I've done the web when I've made but, a couple of websites. It looks anyway. fine in Dreamweaver, but then I make it live, and it's like. Oh, fuck. What did I do? <laughs> well, there you go. There's our uh, two cents. Take it as you will, ArenaNet. I will be posting this video to the forums. Hopefully, you guys get to see it. And, I mean, it is 50 minutes long, so I don't know how, whether or not you guys are going to watch it all the way through. But that's our feelings on it. We had quite a bit of a good time. Oh, it was, it was great. I'm, and honestly, you guys are great. December one. You guys are great, and I'm hoping for more events. So, I'm looking forward to that. But, really, for now, this has been Lyats and Azalee. Yes. With Cyan Firefly. I, I do have one thing. Whoever's making those those little um, cracks in the wall and stuff. Oh. <laughs> You're I a bastard. You're I a bastard. I got footage of this. If I did, I will play it right now. There was this one particular <laughs> incident where we thought we were getting into the hive. It was on oh. phase, it was on phase two. We thought we were getting into the hive, and we saw this little crack in the wall. So we all decided to run through it. This crack was nothing hole. but lies, lies and slander and death. We all <laughs> fell into this hole that was right there. At least like thirty people, shoom, off the edge of a cliff into this ravine. We all died. I. It was, I Hilarious! I almost I, wet myself. I fell for it twice. I the first time I was like, "What is this?" I go inside and I fall. The second time I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna try this again and see if maybe maybe if I sneak around, it's kind of like one of those jumping puzzles. No. Sneak around. Well, no, I still fall, but somehow I managed to stay alive. And like four or five other people fall, so I'm rezzing them and then realize there's no, there's way, no way out. out. <laughs> so we had, to, nonetheless, we still had to jump to. One of the freaking waste points. I'm like, you bastards. Okay, so that's your closing thoughts. <laughs> yes. There you go. You're a cheap bastard. For, Whoever makes those. For I now. I love it, though. <laughs> for now, this has been Lyant. And Azalee. With Cyan Firefly. And we'll leave you with a funny little thing that we did at the very end. Because I discovered a nice little potion of transformation. Here you go, guys. See you later, Fireflies. Oh, God. Hey, hey, Asley. Hello no. there. What? Hi. What? What is this? Hello there. Go. No. Get, get back here. No, no, no. Get back here. No. I want to hug you with my four legs. Oh God. Come on. No, no. Come here. No, go away. Hello. What is this? Go away. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Come keep, here. Keep away from me. <laughs> Come here. 
Fuck Let off. me hug you. Fuck off. No, I want, I want you. Get back here. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's a car. It's a Karka transformation potion. Oh Jesus! You had to. Yes, I did. <laughs>